If you want to build a transparent wearable computer like my Optagon, you're going to need a tiny micro display, a powerful backlight, and a set of optics that are far too advanced to design anywhere outside a college research lab. But what if you could see right through the display itself? Can this $23 piece of glowing glass replace this $700 augmented reality headset? Today, you're going to learn two important facts. The first, YouTube demonetizes videos if you swear within the first 30 seconds. Number two, this heads up display is bullshit. Ladies, gentlemen, but especially cyborgs, welcome to Void Star Lab where great ideas become terrible projects. And today, that idea is yours. A few months ago, Sean Hodgins, right here on YouTube, took 10 transparent organic light emitting diode panels and stacked them up to make the 10x volumetric display cube. Well, Sean's video got a Brazilian views, and I'm totally not jealous of it one bit, but the requests started pouring in on stream chat, Discord, even email. Take one of those see-through OLEDs and make it into a wearable. It's easy to see why people keep suggesting this. My Optagon headset is see-through. This is a see-through display. The Optagon is kind of impractical, but the OLED is imminently hackable. And compared to the Epson Moverio, the headset that I pulled the optics from the Optagon out of, this OLED is much thinner, way lighter, and it lets you see what Gwen's seeing. Borderlands players are like, ha! Ah, and cinema files are like, ha! Ah. The downside is kind of a big one though. There's no way in heck this display could possibly work. It's not impossible in the way everyone thought space travel was impossible until Elon Musk sent Jeff Bezos to Mars. It is impossible the way ghosts are impossible. The universe follows rules and Gwen and her heads up display are part of the universe and they gotta follow the rules. You cannot read a display that is one inch in front of you. It's not even like I have to prototype that to prove it. I did it anyways. You may wonder how I cope with plunging dozens of hours and hundreds of dollars into a project that I know is a worthless dead end. My strategy, hard liquor. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare, the learning community with thousands of professional tutorials taught by real masters. In Cocktail Secrets, making your signature drink, you will go behind the Jaeger bombs and straight into the professional coctological techniques that Ivy Mix, award-winning bartender, uses to design her innovative beverages. I've actually been to Leyenda, her pan-Latin Brooklyn cocktaileria, and the drinks were quite good, so I found it really, really interesting to get behind the bar and into the kitchen to find out how she experiments with flavors and designs an entire drink program. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. You will find thousands and thousands of unique classes, including things that people who don't drink do instead, like start multi-million dollar businesses, getting their novels published, and building robot exoskeletons. A toast to Skillshare and to science. This is a transparent graphical OLED display module, and if you've ever used a cheap SSD1306 like the ones in my Amogus card swipe, you're going to be right at home. Each pixel is an organic LED embedded in glass, which means that when you turn one off, it doesn't turn black. It goes clear. The pixels are clear, the substrate is clear, even the wires are clear. They're made with indium tin oxide, one of the very few transparent electrical conductors. So this module isn't transparent because all the electronic things are microscopic. It's transparent because it's made of transparent parts. Isn't that rad? You can't just plug something like this straight into an Arduino, so I bought a driver board made by Crystal Fonts that breaks out the signal lines and generates 12 volts to power it. I was surprised to discover that this doesn't really flicker that much on camera, which is rare. Uh, displays like this tend to flicker a lot. The, the Amogus card swipe is actually really hard to film, believe it or not. It's very scientific. You don't want to hear about it, and I don't want to tell you about it. Shut the f up. To make this display truly wearable, I snapped the mounting bracket off the breakout board, I patched in a cable extension, and I desoldered that pin header. We need Bluetooth low energy, and we need a power management chip to handle the sticky lithium battery. It's sticky because it's, it's shaped like a stick. Well, today's board is going to be the Adafruit NRF52 Feather. As soon as the battery is hooked up, the display flickers to life and starts rendering a series of demo images provided by Crystal Fonts. We're going to put our own stuff on the screen soon, but seeing this fragile module flapping in the wind is seriously stressing me out. I decided to rip Tony Stark all the way off and build my very first headband style over the forehead setup. This is a new level of lame. Sorry. 
you're interested in seeing me design future projects, they are every Monday and Friday at 1800 UTC. I put the printer out here this time. Instead of putting a camera in there, I put the printer out here. My brain is so f***ing big. The display goes in front, the driver is on top, and over here is the module and the battery in this little side-mounted compartment. Hopefully this distributes the weight evenly across my cranium and uh, makes us both comfy enough for Gwen and swag delicious enough for me. This was the perfect first project to break out my new E3D tool changer, my multi-extruder kick-ass super printer, which you're gonna see a lot more of in the next few episodes. If you like, comment, and subscribe. I wrote a couple of nugatory animations and I could not resist putting the Singularitron's random status lines on there too. It's my favorite library. We could feed this thing data or commands over Bluetooth, although that's not really necessary for a prototype. Yet here I go, feeding in data over Bluetooth. So let's charge it up, put it on, and activate the house party protocol. Although, not really, I don't actually have any robot exoskeletons, although maybe if I take a certain class on a certain website, yeah, I'd have to quit drinking though. This headset is cheap, it's easy to build, it's surprisingly comfortable, and it looks really cool. As for how well it works, well, I initially expected this to be illegible, but I was wrong. It's invisible. Take a look through this camera I surgically implanted in my skull. No matter what I display, it, all it looks like is a faint blue blob. The problem is that the display is so close to my eye that it's not physically capable of focusing on it. But why? Why? Optics are really complicated, like they're far too complex for me to explain. So allow me to explain. A camera's imaging chip and the retinas in your eyes are both basically the same thing, they're light sensors. The image is really just an XY plot of every photon that physically collided with the sensor at a given time. Glowing things emit photons, transparent things let photons pass through, and everything else reflects photons that hit them. We're gonna get to transparent things in a sec because they behave a little different, but except for special cases, glowing things and opaque things behave identically from the point of view of the sensor. And they don't fire photons in one direction like a cannon. They spray photons as many directions as possible, like a spray paint can or that time your kid microwaved a potato and you're still cleaning bits of spot off the ceiling and the walls. You see, for every photon that travels straight from the thing to the sensor at a perfect right angle, a whole bunch of them are firing off at random angles. This image has no detail because photons that should be here making up that detail are ending up here covering up a different detail. It gets even worse. This display has 7,168 glowing LEDs, each firing its own little spray of photons, and those random cones are overlapping each other and making a giant mess. Suppose instead we had a magic display that fired photons directly from the display to the sensor in the shortest possible path. No cones, just lines. That picture would be perfectly crisp. Each pixel on the camera would be reading nothing but the pixels of the display that are directly in front of it. The camera's image would then be a tiny photocopy of the displayed image. Spraying photons means a blurry picture because the display's pixels are, in addition to lighting up the area they're supposed to, are lighting up a bunch of areas they're not supposed to. So the question is, can we straighten out the photons without using a magic display? Heck yeah. The easiest way to do this is just to back up. Because light is spreading out in all directions, the more distance there is between the sensor and the object, the more parallel the light rays that hit the sensor are. Let's be totally clear, the distance does not tell the photons somehow to straighten out their lives. The same photons are taking the same path. The only difference is the camera sensor is now a smaller target. So only photons that just happen to be moving roughly parallel with each other by sheer chance are gonna be able to hit it. The rest just go wide and don't get picked up by the sensor. We can take this even further in the other direction. We can block most of the sensor, make it super small using a device like this pinhole that makes a tiny target that only allows in the straightest, most parallel photons. But neither of these approaches can work for a wearable display. To make it wearable, the display has to be close to my face. And you know, there's no place to put a pinhole. It'll either block most of the display or most of my eye. We have to force the photons to be parallel. So it's time to bring in those clear objects that we teased earlier. Light passes through clear things. I know, huge revelation. 
but light doesn't necessarily pass through in a straight line. When a ray of light hits a clear object at an angle, it bends as it enters. That's called refraction. It also bends as it leaves. But the point is that the sharper the angle at which it hits the surface, the more that angle is altered. We can use this property to design a curved clear lens that forces fanned out blurry light ray cones closer to parallel. The more aggressively angled photons just happen to hit the most aggressively curved part of the lens. The light is now moving straight into the sensor and the important part, each photon's final destination corresponds to the part of the object that initially yeeted it, reproducing a tiny copy of the object. What's the past tense of yeet? Is it yeeted, yeet, yeet, yeet? A plump, girthy lens aggressively shoves light rays around so you can focus on nearby objects, spraying a very wide spray of photons. A flat lens more politely nudges the light rays around so you can focus distant objects whose rays are already closer to parallel. And what once was blind now can see, hallelujah! Since our display is almost point blank, we are going to need the strongest lens we can find. It's a good thing your eyes already have a pair of lenses. Are your eyes tough enough? Let's see if they're up for the job. It's time for a science experiment. Forget pooping, science is what matters. Take your phone and hold it at arm's length. If you're watching on a PC, hold your monitor at arm's length. Focus on the spinning hypno disc. It's easy, right? Well, try bringing the video closer and closer to your face while continuing to focus on the hypno disc. Ignore how you're getting sleepier and sleepier. At about a foot, you can start to feel your eyes working. At about eight inches, it takes deliberate effort to maintain your focus. Somewhere between two and six inches, mostly depending on how old you are, it's gonna become straight up impossible to focus on the hypno disc, no matter what kind of silly face you make. This experiment is over, but by now the hypno disc has obliterated every single independent thought from your mind. You want to go into this video's description, click on every social media link and hit follow. Then you want to go to our Patreon and type in the biggest number you can think of. When I snap my fingers, you will forget everything that just happened. You'll wake up and feel nothing but a burning desire to tell everyone you've ever met to watch every one of my videos. Your cornea, the bulgy part of your eye, is a lens, but you actually have a second lens within the eyeball itself, suspended in a disgusting matrix of muscles and ligaments called the ciliary body. These things squish the lens, boosting its power so you can see close objects, or they can relax and pull the lens flat so you can focus on distant objects. Your ciliary body can only stretch and squish the lens so much. And remember, the bulginess of a lens dictates its power. This puts a hard limit on how close an object you can focus on. That's what makes this heads-up display inherently unworkable balderdash bogus. No, no one can focus on a display that's that close to the naked eye, making it impossible to actually, you know, display stuff. A wearable display made from a clear OLED cannot and will not be readable full stop with just your eyes, because the lenses in them cannot focus on something that close. This is where the know-it-alls in the audience start to smirk and stroke their chins at the old Zachary, for their pulsating brains have computed the answer. Just to add another lens between the display and the eye. How could I be so blind? Here, let me, let's demonstrate. Let's take a lens and put it in between my eye and the display. Yeah, the display is now readable, but the real world is not. The lens can't tell the difference between light coming off the display and light passing through the display. So yeah, sure, it bends light rays coming off the display into a form you can see, but then it bends light from the real world that's already parallel so far that you can't focus on that. At this point, the display might as well be pitch black. This heads up display is malarkey, yet this one is amalarchical. What am I hiding? The hard part of wearable displays was never the display. It's the optics. Nowadays, you can get micro displays for like two bucks. The challenge is not the display. You don't need a clear display. The challenge was and still is creating lightweight, distortion-free collimators and beam splitters. Optics that don't just make light rays more parallel, they make them all the way parallel. And they do it without touching light from the real world. 
This is one of the simplest examples of a collimating beam splitter or red dot reflex sight. This lens is actually a half silvered or half reflective curved mirror. And its job is to make this teeny weeny LED appear to be floating in the air hundreds of feet away. The sight picture is completely clear because the beam splitter allows plenty of light from the front. And the LED is very bright because it reflects plenty of light from the LED. But the cool part is the dot is always in focus and it always appears in the same position, no matter how I move my head, because the photo have been almost perfectly aligned. Here's a more complex example, Google Glass. Three laser projectors in the temple bounce a beam off a DLP panel, a display where each pixel is actually a tiny adjustable mirror. This sends the light into a prism through a double-sided angled beam splitting mirror. Some of the light escapes, but most of it passes through. Uh, it hits a concave mirror at the end of the prism, which sends the light back, reflecting off the other side of the double-edged mirror, and finally, into your face double-sided mirror. Remember, light only refracts when it hits clear materials at an angle. We can use whatever optic system we want. Mirrors, lenses, prisms, filters, displays, backlights, lasers, waveguides, liquid crystalline silicon micro mirror arrays. But as long as a single piece of glass in front of my eye is flat, as long as it lets at least some light through from both the display and the real world, the image will appear transparent and the real world will be sharp and visible without having to adjust your eyes at all. You're better off just making the display opaque and making the optics transparent. So yeah, I hope this demonstration has put this issue to bed, smothered it with a pillow, burned the body, fused the ashes into a diamond, fired the diamond into the sun, and blew up the sun. A transparent wearable cannot work. It's flim flam, it's baloney, it's just for looks. And it's not a matter of engineering, it's a matter of physics. I hope I've convinced you that this project is not worth building, but a complete bill of materials is in the description. You know why? Because I'm an American, and I support your decision to make whatever you want, no matter how stupid it is. Speaking of freedom, the first insert number here viewers to use the link in the description will get a free all access free trial of Skillshare Premium for free. Special thanks to our unnervingly helpful collaborators, CMD or Command, I'm not Betacore, Jeremy Arnold, Sweaty Vag, and Chuck Faduk Small Dong. I have hidden their names somewhere in this episode. Can you find them or are you going to let that guy find them first? The real heroes truly are the ones whose names can't be spoken in front of children. But who could forget our lab assistant supporters, the pillars of our community? We have a lot of pillars, it's like the Parthenon. These entities allegedly include Kevin DeGraff, Guy Gasm, BLM and Friends, Daniel Cadwell, Roger Pinko, Mark Whittington, Good Suck, Bob Dobbington, Nathan Johnson, The Antifa, Zanforian, Protagonist, Epon Man, Damn Near Rector, Chrome Runner, Talon, Democratic Socialist, and a pretty righteous dude. He credited that to me, but he wrote it. C. Harris, My Dog is a Bear, Rusty Flute, Achillea, Just a Silly Vixen, Nino Gansitano, Zosh, <laughs> Michael Roche, Brad Cox, Philip, Period Clots, Ah, Michael Dunn, Zoster, Autismo, Autismo, Victor Vaughn, One Handful of Beans, Lydia K, Eddie, Reagan Says, Inflammable and Flammable mean the same thing, Jason Lawallen, Joe Hart, Powerful CCH, Robert Breeze, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Jay, Trans Rights, Azundo, Frantic Fanatic, Bill Schooler, The World's Greatest Drone Pilot, Bot Grinder FPV, SXP, Taranak, Varka, Olivier Yiptong, Silly Patron Name, and Mamish Gvaldik Shep Nachas Shavuot Tov 420 Swag Blaze It, my Yiddish Mama. Let's give a round of applause to Brooke, pink hair champion since 2001, and to our Discord mods, my fair Julie, Techniac, and introducing our sharp beaked eye in the sky, Dr. Eagle Talon. But thanks to you for suggesting new projects and sticking with me whether they come together or not. Unlike this display, I will see you in the future.